The skin is the protective wrapping of the human body, the first line of defense against invasion by germs. But the skin does much more than protect. It also helps the body to breathe, keep a stable temperature, and to get rid of waste products. The skin also serves as a radar aerial, thanks to the millions of nerve endings which send warning signals to the brain. The skin is only one or two millimeters thick, and it has three layers. It's shut. As far as germs like us are concerned, anyway, we never get in, barring accidents. This is the protective outer layer, the epidermis, and we're about to see a sweat gland go into action. I ask you, who'd be a germ? This is the first layer of the skin, one quarter of a millimetre under the surface. Half a millimetre further down, we come to the basal layer, where the epidermis is created. If you'd be so good to let go of my leg, dear boy, I'll get your side. What is all this? We don't like shoe jumpers here, you know. You will get there in the end. Last one up, Sir Rodini. blood vessel, we rediscover an old friend. So you see, children, it's completely impossible to wear out the epidermis because every single cell in that layer is replaced within 20 days. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, kids, you haven't earned a rest yet. That oxygen you're carrying is urgently needed by cells along the scapillary, so get a move on. You can rest later. And a very good day to you, Professor. Why don't you take the kids on a guided tour once you've made the delivery? Good idea. Mm. Nice work if you can get it. That's a nice turn. <laughs> Me too. Would you look at that? Look, it's Lieutenant, a sit-down strike. We can't get through with our oxygen. Something that's quite disgusting, Lieutenant. Just look at them sunbathing while we workers are busy breaking our backs. It's just not fair, is it? You're jumping to conclusions. The melanocytes may look as though they're not working, but I can assure you that is not the case. You're absolutely right, Lieutenant. It's easy to criticize us if you don't know what our job is. We lie here all day filtering our dangerous burning ultraviolet rays from the sunlight with no thought for ourselves. We protect the skin by turning brown to create a sun tan. And we also manufacture vitamin D, which is necessary for strong bones. Who works harder than us? Red corpuscles. Hmm. Oh. Let's go, children. You are the cutest red corpuscle <laughs> I've ever seen. Oh, go on. Wake up, droopy. <laughs> Puzzle doesn't think it's funny. It's hard work squeezing along a tiny capillary in single file, especially for the senior citizens. The young ones don't seem to mind, unless they're very young it is. Professor Globus is quite puffed out by the time they get to the next layer of skin, which to the amazement of the young puppies looks like a beautiful garden full of exotic flowers. But these flowers are actually sensory organs, and their stems are nerves. Here we are, children, the second layer, seven-tenths of a millimetre under the surface. We've left the epidermis behind, and now we're in the dermis. There's a lot going on here. Just look at those nerve endings. There must be millions of them in the epidermis. 
Is it the same all over, Professor? My child, have you forgotten already? I told you once before that the hands and the face have the most nerve endings, which makes them more sensitive than the other areas of the skin. Professor, what do those flowers do? All these different types of nerve endings have their own special jobs to do. Some are sensitive to heat, some to cold, some to pressure. Those organs there, for example, they are sensitive to light pressure. Right. Now let's go on. Hold on tight, children, and don't worry, it's only the horrible effects. Good heavens, Professor, that must have been an earthquake. Nothing like it, I'm afraid. That was just a goose pimple coming up, which proves it must be fairly nippy out there today. Come on, let me show you. Look, he's perfectly harmless. Pull the hair upright to warm the body, and that's my calling in life. I hope it doesn't upset you. Because that's the way it has to be, see? But the only thing I really don't like about this work is the job description. It's horrible being a horripilator. But to horripilate means to make hair stand on end, that's all. It's a sign of cold or emotion, as in an animal when its hackle dries. Human beings get goosebumps instead. You have another name, too, the erector pile muscle. I don't like that one either. I want to be called a heating engineer. Huh? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, here we are, smack bang in the middle of the dermis, one millimeter down from the surface. Welcome to the gardens of Italy. I love Italy. The warmth, the colors, the music. But before we sample the delights of Italy, let's take a trip to Frosty Germany. is corpuscle. He's a cold sensor and takes himself very seriously. Still playing it cool, Krauser? Still making jokes, sir. I'm a hard-working corpuscle with no time for foolishness, Professor. I didn't mean to offend you, Krauser. We all know how hard you work. Uh, Just don't overdo it, that's all. Uh, the road is level now as Professor Globus leads his young friends on a tour of the dermis. A few naughty little platelets have attached themselves to the party of red corpuscles. They too are keen to visit the gardens of Italy, to use the professor's words. Hello, Prof. Are you still in harness? Heavens, yes. An early retirement doesn't appeal to me. Not at all. Prof. Hello, hello, hello. Petro, still on the alert? Yes, and it's far too boring and quiet for my liking. Come on, chaps, let's look for a fight. to be in good shape, Professor. Well, suppose I can't complain, not at my age. And what are you up to? Oh, the same old routine, you know, the usual. Don't underestimate the human body. There's always something unusual going on. Bye, Professor. We'll bear that remark in mind. Yes, we will. Bye. talk about Italy, you get quite carried away. Why? Please tell us. Well, many parts of the dermis were discovered by Italian doctors, as you shall shortly see. It was Mel Peavy who discovered us 300 years ago and gave us our name, the Red Corpuscles. Other Italian explorers, children, are you listening to me? Discovered all sorts of special corpuscles, which are as beautiful as flowers. Men with names like Ruffini, Pacini, and Golgi. Did you get all that globing? Oh, yes, Come on, then, this way to the gardens of Italy. Behold, children. 
Profine Rahit Simpson. He's the exact opposite of Frigido Krauser. Golgi corpuscles, their function is to detect gentle pressure. Look, see how they respond. Ah, oh, children, but the best is yet to come. We are now in the hypodermis, two millimeters down from the surface. Professor, what is that yellow stuff, please? That, my dear child, is common or garden adipose tissue, fat to the uninitiated. It forms a protective coating for nerves and blood vessels. It separates the skin from the muscles beneath. And it also acts as a fuel reserve for the body, an emergency supply of energy which is there when it's needed. It also provides comfortable padding to sit on and, alas, cellulite. There's the most gorgeous flower of all. That's Pacini, which is sensitive to hard pressure. Didn't I tell you it was beautiful? Yes. Pity we can't watch it all day. Um. Now that's a sweat gland. Look, it's making a droplet which will eventually evaporate on the surface. Those glands get rid of waste products and keep the body cool. There are about three million of them. Three million? Yes. Now that's a hair. Wait. It's moving because it's come into contact with something up there on the surface. And I'm afraid I don't like the look of this one bit. <gasps> Something's going on outside. Isn't that just the erector muscle at work? I'm going to investigate this. It can't be the muscle. He's in a state of complete relaxation. Could it have been the wind, do you think? It's quite possible, Lieutenant. The skin is exposed today. No, Captain, look. It seems Pacini has detected something. <laughs> You're right. This warrants a closer look. Let's keep things moving. What's the matter with you professors today? Is that a whole basket of grenades, Elsie? Expecting trouble? Can't say I blame you. <laughs> Something is trying to suck us all out of the body. This is an emergency. Captain Peter, do you read me? Please come in, Metro. Do you copy? Receiving you loud and clear, Lieutenant. All right, let's go, men.
mosquito! He's pumping in antigens. It's a very good job we got here in time. Calling all antibodies with experience of Anopheles mosquito antigens. Please report to Section B24 immediately. Over and out. That nerve is carrying a pain message. What is going on? Metro, do you read me? Metro! Metro, what's going on? I order you to reply. I've got no time for explanations now. Let me handle him, Peter. Metro, control yourself. We picked up an SOS from Lieutenant Jumbo, but we don't know his location. So please, tell us. Oh, very well then. Um, a mosquito is injecting antigens by the million and huge quantities of irritant to stimulate blood flow in Zone B24. This is Captain Peter. All lymphocyte ships will report to Zone B24 immediately. Oh, it's enough to turn your stomach. Well done, Metro, my friend. You didn't waste much time, did you? Well, you can relax now that we're here, Jumbo. We've dealt with this sort of situation before, and all my men are veterans. Enter battle now, men. Charge! Control yourself, Metro. Don't start an allergic reaction. The antibodies will never contain them unaided. We need reinforcements. You've oh. got your reinforcements, Jumbo. Peter! Paratroops, stand by to jump. Now go. Tissue. Here we have a typical defensive action fought by the skin, using all the available resources, such as macrophages, who eat the invaders, antibodies, who kill them, or histamine, which destroys them chemically. Look, see how they've got the problem licked already. <laughs> That was hot work, Lieutenant. The poison is under control. And apart from a little inflammation, all is well. Uh, 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 well, where do we go from here, Jumbo? Fresh troops are coming to relieve you, Elsie. They shouldn't be long now. Jumbo, have you seen Professor Globus anywhere? He was back there. I'll take a look. <laughs> Professor Globus. Before your very eyes and as life, my dear. <laughs> Horrible insect that stung me, you know. It really hurts. Take a look at what I found. All right, let's go. Bessa, I've 
never seen anything so beautiful in my whole life. Yes, it is lovely, isn't it? All these organs react to pain, to gentle or hard pressure, to cold or to the heat of inflammation. And the information is sent along the cutaneous nerve, then up the spinal column to the brain. A signal takes a hundredth of a second to reach the brain. Look at that, the skin is being scratched from the outside. That could cause an infection, you know. Stroppy, Antibody Commando Metro speaking, about to engage Streptococci. Send reinforcements over and out. Come on, lads. Let's get them. Battle tide seems to be turning against us. I wish those reinforcements would arrive. At last! Here we are, Metro. Only four of you. Is that all the ships they could spare? Yes, I'm afraid so, Metro. We simply have to manage with the few units we were able to scrape together. Now, let's go. <laughs> Hold the line till I return, Metro. I'm going to look for some reinforcements. <laughs> Those germs are really beginning to annoy me. Let's have a look. Oh. Men, let's show them that we can go down fighting to the last man. Aha! Disinfectant, we're saved. Let's go while the going's good. <laughs> They're running, lads. <laughs> oh, no! Ah, disinfectant, we're finished. Oh, no. <laughs> so it turns out that the skin is not just a wrapping intended to keep your insides in. Far from it. It's a complicated organ, and a large one, making up about 7% of your body. The skin draws one-third of the blood circulation. It has three layers, hypodermis, dermis, and epidermis. Together, they keep our bodies comfortable, clean, and healthy. <laughs> 